Welcome to Anonymous Australian History, the Herbert Hoover Link. Most US presidents were well received when they visited Australia. Lyndon B. Johnson, aside from the paint incident, George H. W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and of course, who could forget President Obama? But what of the only US president who actually lived, worked, and perhaps loved in Australia. This video covers the link between Australia and Herbert Clark Hoover, the 31st president of the United States of America. Herbert Hoover is remembered as the president of the United States who obtained the unenviable position of being in office during the inception of the Great Depression and was also responsible for authorising the Star Spangled Banner as the American National Anthem. Oh wait, not that one. Yeah, that one. But what of his link to Australia and possible romantic interest? Much has been written of Hoover's exploits and achievements from 1900 onwards, where he was a married man working initially for private enterprise before functioning tirelessly for the American government with a number of capacities, including head of the Food Administration, Secretary of Commerce, President of the United States of America, author, and chairman of a number of philanthropic organizations and government commissions. What is less known and less publicized, at least within his official presidential archives, is his accomplishments within Australia. It is not often that a future president makes his mark within the great southern land. So let's take a brief look into Herbert Hoover's Australian adventures. A 23-year-old Herbert Hoover arrived in Albany, Western Australia in 1897 as a compliant surveyor for Bewick Mooring and Company, a British mining engineering firm. The company originally advertised the position as a, suitable for a single experienced mining engineer of about 35 years of age, willing to travel to the Australian gold fields. Perhaps this is why Hoover grew a moustache, lest the company and other more experienced engineers should wonder why Americans age so well. Hoover journeyed from Albany to Coolgardie by train and from there travelled from goldfield to goldfield by various means, including camel. There is an old saying that no one looks graceful on a camel. Herbert's main task at this stage was to report on the company's existing Western Australian mines and to seek out others for possible acquisition. Hoover recommended the acquisition of the Sons of Gwala Mine and it was purchased in November 1897. Hoover was later appointed manager of the Sons of Gwala Mine from mid-1898 for a period of six months. During this time he instigated several procedures to increase efficiencies, including extending working shift hours, ceasing double pay Sundays, procuring camel trains, redesign of the mining operation to align mine working to the actual angle of the ore body and employment of Italian workers for lower than usual wages. Hoover designed the mine manager house and also oversaw the design of the staff and office buildings, though he had already left the country when the buildings were completed. Now we move on to a very interesting situation. Whilst managing the Sons of Guayla Mine, Herbert took residence at 6 Elizabeth Street, Kalgoorlie, reported to be the flash end of town at the time. He was known to frequent the Palace Hotel at Kalgoorlie and allegedly commenced a romantic relationship with an attractive barmaid working there. There was even a poem written on presumption of this romance. It leads me to think of what could have occurred if Hoover's cable marriage request to his college sweetheart, Lou Henry, was turned down. Would he have left for China alone or in turn requested his fetching barmaid accompany him? 
This would have been the first time in history that an Australian barmaid could have been in running for First Lady. Imagine that. This is, of course, complete speculation. Lou Henry was a very well-educated and progressive woman who did much for the development of Herbert's character and was in no small part key in his path to the White House. Herbert Hoover became increasingly frustrated with company officials in Western Australia and as a result was reassigned to work in China from December 1898. He only managed the mine for a relatively short period of time, however the Sons of Guayla proved to be the most successful Bewick, Maureen and Company mine and overall one of the more successful Western Australian mines. More on Hoover's Australian legacy later. Hoover was later made a partner of the company, which was a shrewd business dealing in itself, though is a story for another time. He continued to travel to Australia up until 1907 to manage company interests. From 1901 to 1904, these stays were up to three months duration, with a lengthier duration from 1905 through to 1907. It was during this time that Herbert, now not so partial to camel rides and a supporter of the efficiency movement, imported a fleet of pan-hard motor cars in order to travel quickly from site to site. This was an innovation, especially within the remote Australian outback where horse, wagon and camel were still the norm for day-to-day -day transportation. It is presumed that Herbert was industrious during these years as 32 mines were listed as owned by his company. Some of these mines were located far from Western Australian sites and included Broken Hill and Mount Isa. It was at Broken Hill where Hoover assisted in implementing new procedures for zinc extraction. As a former resident of Mount Isa, it would be appealing if it was proven that a former US president actually visited the town. Now that would be a first. But now on to Hoover's Australian legacy. At the second closure of operations in 1963, the Sons of Guayla Mine had produced 2.644 million ounces of gold. The incline shaft, designed by Hoover, would eventually become one of the deepest in Australia with a depth of 1,219 metres or 3,999 foot. Italian miners continued to work at the mine until its closure in 1963. The mine manager house, designed by Herbert, was constructed of locally fired brick and is still in use as a bed and breakfast, now known as the Hoover House. Hoover was reported to have actually spent some time in the house on a visit in 1902. The large oak cutler desk used by Hoover at the Sons of Guayla mine site was later sold and remains in an excellent condition, last known to be in the possession of Mr. Ron Manners of Western Australia. There is also the story of Herbert Hoover presenting a mirror to the Palace Hotel as a parting gift. A very ornate and magnificent mirror is on display at the hotel. However, whether or not it actually belonged to the former president is questionable. Fittingly, next to the elaborate mirror hangs an excerpt of the poem attributed to Hoover's affection for the barmaid. There is enough evidence to suggest that Hoover did not pen the verse and that it may have even been heavily plagiarised to perpetuate the myth. The poem is the inspiration of a mural which has been commissioned to artist Sarah McCloskey to complete in a laneway behind the Palace Hotel. Herbert Clark Hoover, unsurprisingly, obtained a nickname whilst in Australia. Stay here long enough, your name is bound to be shortened. Stay here even longer after some form of achievement, accomplishment or experience and you will undoubtedly obtain a nickname. Hoover's Australian-based friends used his initials, HC, to form the nickname Hail Columbia. This refers to Hoover's preference to employ American engineers in mining methods, 
and also fittingly given Hoover's noted fondness for his native country. As far as the present state of the Sons of Guayla Mine, it has since passed through the ownership of two companies and operations are set to continue to the year 2024, with a mine shaft touted to extend to two kilometres, or 6,561 feet. Herbert Hoover was reported to be a clear-headed and reserved man who embraced efficiencies. His work in Australia is punctuated by his ability to compile clear, comprehensive and accurate reports. You can certainly see how Herbert Hoover developed into a president of character and a much sought chairman of various commissions. Herbert Clark Hoover, 31st President of the United States from 1929 through to 1933, passed away on the 20th of October 1964 in New York City. He was 90 years old. Thanks for your time. Please like and subscribe. And as always, I'm very interested in your comments on this subject.